One of the most celebrated Halloween and Christmas films is that delightful stop-motion musical The Nightmare Before Christmas, with its amazing German Expressionist visuals, unforgettable songs, and incredible creativity. It's not surprising this is an annual viewing for a lot of people during this time of year, including myself. And we certainly know a lot about the talents who helped contribute to its success. Director Henry Selick, songwriter Danny Elfman, storyboard artist Joe Ranf, screenwriter Caroline Thompson, and uh, one more person. It's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, let me see the Blu-ray. That's it. Tim Burton. I'm so glad Disney put his name above the title, or I would have never noticed his fingerprints all over this film. However, what about the other folks who might not know had a hand in The Nightmare Before Christmas? Well, I'm going to celebrate them as I count down the names you may recognize in the credits. Starting with... Timothy Hiddle. One of many incredible animators on Nightmare Before Christmas, Hiddle has managed to jump seamlessly between stop motion and computer animation. Hill worked on some of the most renowned stop-motion works at the start of his career, including a Gumby television series, Bump in the Night, James and the Giant Peach, and even the Wallace and Gromit short, The Wrong Trousers. His short film, The Potato Hunter, got quite a bit of attention, and then Canhead, about a man protecting his dog from a metal robot, got him an Oscar nomination for Best Animated Short. He has posted both shorts on his YouTube page, so give them a watch sometime. Hiddle has worked as an animator at Pixar for many years, starting with A Bug's Life, although he never fully abandoned stop motion, reteaming with Henry Selick again for Monkey Bone and for the animated portions of Wes Anderson's The Life Aquatic. It's no surprise Timothy Hiddle has been in such high demand. Chris Levinson. Serving as a consulting editor on The Nightmare Before Christmas, it's a little surprise he found himself involved with this project in some capacity. He has been Tim Burton's editor of choice ever since they collaborated on Batman Returns, and he also worked as Tony Scott's frequent editor for many years, receiving Academy Award nominations for Top Gun and Crimson Tide. Levinson and Burton's partnership remains largely unbroken, and I know Burton gets criticized for using the same people throughout his projects, but they work so well in sync it's hard to blame them. Thank you for keeping the pacing going and making the necessary cuts, Chris Levinson. Mike Johnson. Credited as Michael W. Johnson on Nightmare Before Christmas, he obviously showed considerable skill as a stop-motion animator for Burden to eventually choose him to help co-direct Corpse Bride many years later. In addition to also animating on James and the Giant Peach and Anomalisa, Johnson directed The Devil Went Down to Georgia music video for the band Primus and a few episodes of the PJs. Currently, he's directing a new animated film called Ping Pong Rabbit, and with his impressive set of credits, there's definitely a project to keep an eye on. Eric Layden. The Nightmare Before Christmas is one of the few animated films to receive an Oscar nomination for Best Visual Effects, and Layden was one of those recognized for his role as the film's animation supervisor. Since then, he's been involved in his fair share of revolutionary projects. He directed Disney's live-action CG hybrid picture Dinosaur, which managed to seamlessly integrate computer-animated dinosaurs into real environments. He also served as the animation director on Peter Jackson's King Kong and Zack Snyder's Legend of the Guardians, The Owls of Gahul, helped bring E.B. Weiss's beloved animals to life as an animation supervisor on Charlotte's Web, and was a lead animator on Coraline. Currently, Eric Layden is the animation director on the upcoming Nomeo and Juliet sequel, Sherlock Gnomes. Looking forward to seeing your contributions to that film, sir. Alison Abate. Serving as the film's artistic coordinator, The Nightmare Before Christmas marked her first of a number of collaborations on a Tim Burton production. I already talked about her on my underrated animation producers list, but it's worth going over Alison Abate's impressive career again. Needless to say, she has had a hand in producing some of your favorite animated films. Among her animation producing credits are The Iron Giant, Corpse Bride, Fantastic Mr. Fox, Frank and Weenie, and The Lego Movie. And in her current position as Executive Vice President of the Warren Animation Group, we can expect to see her name on many more great animated features. Steve Moore. His list of credits are many, with Moore bringing his humor and input into the films from many an animation studio. His contributions to The Nightmare Before Christmas came as a result of his period at Disney, where he served as a storyboard artist. He also dabbled in special effects on a number of Disney's big animated films at the time. 
His directorial work at Disney Television is also worth highlighting, including a couple of musical segments on the Timon and Pumbaa series. Moore directed the hilarious parody short Redux Riding Hood about a time-traveling Big Bad Wolf trying to change the famous fairy tale. The anthology series this was supposed to be a part of was unfortunately cancelled, but he did manage to get an Oscar nomination for his efforts. Moore later directed the Christmas special All of the Other Reindeer for Fox and Matt Groening, and since then has storyboarded on a number of big films at Warner Brothers, Blue Sky, and Illumination Entertainment. Steve Moore is definitely one of the most unsung heroes of many an animated feature today. Dean Taylor. The art direction is one of the most instantly recognizable elements of The Nightmare Before Christmas, and Taylor is the one to thank for that. Expanding Burton's original sketches of Halloween Town and bringing them to life, it's no surprise Taylor was given an Annie Award for his brilliant work here, and working on Nightmare also allowed him to do something different from the many, many Hanna-Barbera productions he's been involved with since the late 70s. He first started in Layout, and was then promoted to art director on a number of the early Cartoon Network shows. He also served as the art director and character designer for Old Dogs Go to Heaven 2. He's done many a great work, but Nightmare Before Christmas definitely stands tall. Denise Thenovi. One of the most successful women producers in Hollywood, The Nightmare Before Christmas was part of a period in which she produced a number of films with Tim Burton, starting with Edward Scissorhands and continuing on to James and the Giant Peach. Even before that collaboration, she had proven herself as an excellent producer on the dark comedy Heathers. Among her most successful producing credits are Little Women, A Walk to Remember, and The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants films. And this year, she stepped into the director's chair with the Catherine Heigl vehicle Unforgettable. As always, she has a large number of films she's attached to as a producer, but I know whenever I see her name, I immediately think of the pictures she worked on with Tim Burton, especially Nightmare Before Christmas. Paul Berry. A brilliant stop-motion animator, it's no surprise Berry was hired to bring his expertise to Nightmare. He began his career working on the Cosgrove Hall adaptation of Wind in the Willows, which I have a lot of fond memories towards. Soon afterwards, he directed the terrifying short film The Sandman, and its images will forever be etched in my mind. That's a short that I think is perfect viewing for Halloween, and he even earned an extremely well-deserved Academy War nomination for Best Animated Short for it. Barry impressed Henry Selick so much, he was a supervising animator on both James and the Giant Peach and Monkey Bone. Sadly, Paul Barry passed away only a couple months after Monkey Bone's release of a brain tumor. It's a shame we never got to see him contribute his talents to Coraline or even the other Leica films. Thankfully, he left us some brilliant stop-motion animated work to always remember him. And the number one name you may recognize in the Nightmare Before Christmas credits is... Rick Heinrichs. Ever since Heinrichs and Tim Burton met when both were working at Disney, they've been almost inseparable. Heinrichs was a major contributor on Burton's early short films at Disney, and it was no surprise Burton asked him to work on the special effects of Pee-wee's Big Adventure and Beetlejuice. Heinrichs became one of the most celebrated production designers in the business. He has, of course, served as a production designer for many of Burton's films, with his most noted achievement being Sleepy Hollow, where his interpretation of a Dutch colonial American town from Washington Irving's famous story won him an Oscar. He also served as a visual consultant on Nightmare Before Christmas. Heinrichs also served as a production designer on a couple of Coen Brothers films, brought his recognizable style to the film adaptation of Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events, and melded World War II with superhero comic books for Captain America the First Avenger. And it will also get to see Heinrichs bring his talents to a galaxy far, far away in the next Star Wars movie. Needless to say, without these wonderfully creative, and imaginative individuals, The Nightmare Before Christmas might have been just a tad different. Now go out, find your best costume, and enjoy your trick-or-treating before Christmas comes and takes over. Hmm, I think I just got what Burton and Selleck were trying to say with this film. See you next time.